Okay, today I'm going to start our connect kinetics unit by doing the first problem in the review packet. Um, we are given an equation that is a balanced chemical equation for redox. Even though redox is not covered on this test, they can give you that as a legitimate thing because they're not asking you to balance it, they're just going to ask you to use it for stoichiometry. All right, chlorine, a gas, can be generated in lab by reacting potassium permanganate, here's our permanganate ion, with an acidified solution of sodium chloride. So the important ion that's going to be there is the chloride ion with the mang um, permanganate. The net ionic equation is given above. A 25 mil sample, got to go back to my pen, 25 mil sample of 0 0.250 molar NaCl reacts completely with excess permanganate. The chloride produced is dried and stored in a still container at 22 degrees Celsius and the pressure of the container is 0 0.950 atmospheres. They're telling you dried because they don't want you to have to worry about having to use Dalton's law that if it was over water that we might have um, had some another gas in there. Okay, so calculate the number of moles of Cl- present before any reaction occurs. So we have 0 0.025 liters is our sample. I turned it into liters by dividing by a thousand. And then I have 0 0.250 mole per one liter of, and we're saying specifically the Cl minus ion. Okay, and so we're asking, um, calculate the number of Cl minus ions present before any reaction occurs. So when we calculate this out, and we're saying, okay, for letter I, do I have my numbers there? And I get 6.25 times 10 to the third mole of Cl minus. Okay. And so now we're going to need to do calculate the volume in liters of Cl2 in the sealed container. All right, so this is the moles of Cl minus, but that is not the moles of chlorine because we need to do some dimensional analysis. Oops. Moles of chloride ion, and then we look here at our equation and we say for every four moles of chloride ion, we have two moles of Cl2. So basically, we have half as much of this. And let me do my calculation, and I get 3.13 times 10 to the negative third mole. All right, I'm going to go back. This has four sig figs. This is three sig figs. So this is the correct number of sig figs for this answer. I don't care if I don't round in between, but I need to know. Oh, actually, this was the answer for A, so I need to put a box around that as well. That's A. And then this is my answer for B. Okay, so we have A and B taken care of. We've done our stoichiometry for this problem. Move on. Now, an initial rate study was performed on the reaction system. Data for the experiment are given in the table below. Using the information in the table, determine the order of the reaction with respect to each of the following. Justify your answer. Okay, so I'm looking for a reaction where chloride changes and permanganate does not change. Okay, so permanganate does not change from experiment one and two. So I'm going to use experiment one and two to answer BI. Okay, so what I see is when permanganate stays constant, and of course the uh, hydrogen ion does as well, my um, rate, excuse me, my concentration of chloride is times three. Okay, so what happens to the rate? Okay, so I divide this number, this 
this number divided by this number, and I should get the number 9. This times 9. Okay, so what do I do here? So if x is 3, I know, I'm sorry, those are time signs. Let me make those time signs so we don't get confused. If x is 3, what do we have to do to 3 to get it to be 9? We have to square it. So x squared is what the, um, the ratio of our um, concentration to the rate. Now we do the permanganate. Let me get a different color here. So we're looking for an experiment where Cl is not changing. Oops, I was supposed to go to blue. Where Cl is not changing. Oops, those, that doesn't work. Back, back. Where Cl is not changing. And so we're going to use experiment 2 and experiment 3 because we're going to see how permanganate changes. I'm sorry, we're changing permanganate and we're leaving chloride ion constant. All right, so what did we do to permanganate? We cut it in half. We divided it by 2. And when we divided it by 2, what happened to the rate? It was divided. What did we do? <laughs> Um, the rate was one-half as well. So if we do the exact same thing, that means they're one-to-one, -one, and so this is just x. All right, so that means this is to the first power and this is to the second power. So hopefully you can understand. It is very important to be able to do this. I expect them to have something like this on the test where you have to determine the um, order with respect to each substance. Okay, so this is second order for Cl minus and first order for MnO4. Oops, I don't need that yet. Jump in the gun. Okay, can't help you can read my handwriting. The reaction is known to be third order with respect to H plus. So, H plus, third order. All right, write the rate law for the reaction. Rate is equal to K times the first ingredient, Cl minus reactant, and that's to the second power. And then the second reactant, and that's MnO4 minus, and that's to the first power. I'll put it in there. And then finally, H plus was given to us to the third power. Okay, that's I. And now they want us to calculate the value of the rate constant, K. All right, so what do we do? Do we know Cl minus? Do we know MnL4? Do we know H plus? And do we know the rate? Well, sure we do. Look at they're right here. Let me get a different color. We know we could pick any of these reactions, but we're going to pick this one. We'll pick this as our rate. This is our H plus concentration, this is our MnO4, and this is our Cl minus. So I'm going to rearrange this ahead of time because I'm trying to find K. So K is going to be equal to the rate. Well, let me put the number in. 2.25 times 10 to the minus third. And it's going to be divided by... Okay, I'm going to put it in little brackets so it makes it easier for me. The chloride ion, which is 0 0.0104, and that will be squared. And then we'll have the MnO4. That's 0 0.0004. I'm not going to put all the sig figs on because it's just too complicated looking. But we'll look at our sig figs at the end. And then we have 3, and that's to the third power. Okay, so 
I can do this a lot of ways, but I actually solved the bottom and then I went back. All right, so now I'm going to say my k is equal to this number divided by net, and I just solved it a moment ago, and I have 1.93. Ten to the negative third, and now we have to figure out our units. So I'm going to just do this. This is going to be molarity squared. This is going to be molarity, and this is going to be molarity cubed. Rate is molarity over seconds. All right. So let me put them in in a different color still. Okay, so I have molarity over seconds. I have molarity squared, molarity, and molarity cubed. So that means three, four, five, I have molarity, molarity the sixth on the bottom, and then I have molarity and per second there. So this means this will be molarity, um, oops, back again, okay. It's going to be 1 divided by molarity to the fifth times seconds. Or the other way they write it is molarity to the negative fifth times second to the minus 1. Okay, that is the unit that goes with this K. Calculate the value of the rate constant for the reaction. Include appropriate units. Each of those are worth one point. Okay, now our next part, I'm just going to scroll down here. Can I get it to scroll? Let me go back to my pen and make it easier. All right. Is it likely that this reaction um, occurs in a single elementary step? So justify your answer. So first thing we can do, I'm going to scroll back up again. And I'm actually going to make this small for a second. Oops, pen. Actually, I'm going to go back to the other slide. It'll make it easier. We have two ways we can do this. First thing is we're going to look at this. Do the coefficients of chloride, hydrogen ion, and permanganate agree with our rate law? Our rate law was um, Cl minus was to the second power, I mean, second order, excuse me, MnO4 was to the first power order, I'm sorry, I'm saying power instead, and then H plus was to the eighth order. I'm so <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, was to the third. Okay, do these numbers coincide with the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation? Because if they do, then it is an elementary step. They do not. You see the numbers do not coincide. This is twice that. This MnO4 is, but the other two are not. <clears throat> so the first thing we can say, going down, let me go back to another color blue. Do not coincide with rate law written. So not an elementary step. Okay, so that's one way you could answer it. Or what you can say is we have three hydrogen ions one permanganate ion and two chloride ions that need to come together at the same time. It has multiple atoms, let me go back, molecules, multiple species, we'll say, species 
must interact to form product according to rate law. Okay, not likely. Or I should say very. Okay, if two things are coming together to make the activated complex, or even three things are coming together to make the activated complex, possibly that could happen. But for this many things to come together for the activated complex is very, very unlikely. So either of those answers are legit for this question. Okay, I feel like that's the last thing. Yeah. All right, so that's problem one. Thank you.